Welcome to yet another video uh, related to a question on deferred tax, the topic we're currently tackling in a series of recording. So once again, if deferred tax is something you want to get right in the CFA Level 1 exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question I want us to have a go at. Over the course of December 2022, Herald Media, a publisher of popular gardening and cookery magazines, collected €260,000 in upfront annual subscriptions from clients. Herald operates in a jurisdiction where subscription income is taxable on a cash basis and the rate of corporate income tax is 25%. So basically, when uh, they received the income, which was in December 2022, um, they need to pay tax um, on that for the year 2022, even though I guess the uh, subscription will relate to um, services that will be rendered over the course of the next year, which is said in the next sentence, for financial reporting purposes, Herald defers the recognition of subscription income until 2023. In respect of the subscription income received in December, which of the following is most likely to be reported on Herald Media's balance sheet as at the 31st of December 2022? And we've got uh, choices uh, um, composed of deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability, um, and, uh, you know, various uh, numbers uh, therein, although I guess the uh, numbers uh, seem to be uh, quite uh, quite similar, although we've got different uh, choices with respect to current assets or current liabilities. Okay, now um, let me, first of all, tell you how this... Uh, question would be solved using one, now this, uh, you know, textbook approach. Because in the previous video, I wanted to get you thinking in terms of the intuition behind uh, deferred tax. Because if you follow this intuitive approach of whether there is more or less tax to be paid in the uh, next year as a result of the temporary difference between the tax treatment and income statement or financial reporting treatment, you'll come to the conclusion that for tax purposes, the tax will have already been paid in 2022 and therefore there will be less tax to pay in the subsequent year, which must result in us recognizing a deferred tax asset. But let's see if we get confirmation of this using the textbook approach. However, uh, before <coughs> we do that, I want to show you, show uh, using a, um, a balance sheet and income statement template, how this whole uh, institution of deferred income is recorded, or the whole concept of deferred tax, uh, deferred income works from a financial statements per perspective, and that should help us. So what I've got over here is a template, uh, which you've seen in the past, with assets, equity, liabilities, and PL as well. And what I'm going to do over here is just show you what happens when a company receives in the year 2022 some income, however, defers the recognition for, of that income uh, from a PL perspective until a subsequent year. So, heading to my assets uh, section here, I'm going to say that the company received some cash which came in the year 2022. So over here, an inflow of 260,000. And if this was an inflow of income or revenue that sh that would be recognized or should have been recognized in the PNL for 2022 this would correspond or this would be met with a similar in um, upward arrow here or a plus sign in the 2022 column within PNL and that would later be transferred into equity as something positive within retained earnings and that would cause the balance sheet to balance however we received the cash in 2022 However, this is for services which the company will render in the next year, in 2023. So uh, clients pay up front for something they will receive in, this, in, the, in the subsequent year. And this means the company cannot recognize the income yet or the revenue yet. It has to treat it as deferred income. And deferred income is an item of liabilities. So sitting over here, let me write this over here, deferred income, don't confuse this with deferred tax, which also can figure as a as a liability. And right now the company will say, okay, I've received 260,000 from clients, but I haven't earned this money yet, so I can't recognize it within my PL yet. I've got to wait until next year when I actually perform the services, and that's when I'll treat it 
as revenue and show it as something positive within P&L. For now, I've got a liability towards my clients to actually give them what they paid for. Okay, so in the subsequent year, when the services are actually rendered, so when the magazines are shipped to clients, or whatever happens, what will happen is this liability will disappear out of here, 260, and it will be recognized as revenue from clients, or simply just revenue, let's say from clients, because it belongs to the year 2023. So 260 positive up here. And this is when, obviously, it will also be transferred to equity and um, have a positive impact on it. So somewhere here, let me write, maybe here, positive 260 or upward arrow 260, which naturally offsets what happens to liabilities so that overall equity and liabilities in 2023 don't um, change or the balance sheet amount, the sum doesn't change. Whereas in the previous year, 200, uh, 2022, we had a corresponding increase to assets and liabilities. Okay, so, so that's the treatment of the deferred income. Now, for tax purposes, it doesn't work like that because from a tax perspective, when you receive the money in 2022, you immediately treat it as taxable income and you pay tax on it for the year 2022. For financial reporting purposes, which we've got here, you defer that recognition until 2023 when the um, services are actually rendered. So there is a simply a temporary difference between the approach for tax purposes and financial reporting purposes. It's temporary, there's a one-year shift, and it leads to the recognition of deferred tax. Okay, if we wanted to approach this problem uh, using the rules that I introduced in a previous video, where I showed you rules for assets, liabilities, and showing you the carrying amount and the tax base, over here, the whole thing boils down to this item, deferred income, which sits within the company's liabilities. So because deferred income is a liability, that's going to be an important starting point. And now, in for the year or for the period ended 31st, let me you know, use the space here, 31st of December 2022. This deferred tax, um, sorry, not deferred tax, deferred income liability has a carrying amount equal to 260,000. From a tax perspective, its so called tax base or tax amount, if you did a balance sheet for tax purposes, you wouldn't have this item in a balance sheet. Um, you know, prepared under the tax rules, because from a ba from a tax perspective, whatever you receive as cash here goes immediately to the tax based uh, income statement, and you pay tax on it. So it's recognized as revenue or income immediately for tax purposes. And therefore, it doesn't hang here or doesn't sit on the balance sheet. So from a tax perspective, this liability doesn't or this deferred income doesn't exist. In the following year. So as at the 31st of December 2023, this deferred income liability is derecognized from the balance sheet, so it stops existing here, and never even existed in the you know, tax-based balance sheet, if we can call it that, and therefore it's zero and zero. Now, there is a temporary difference of 260 over here, which stops existing, one year later. Now, if we're talking about a liability, an item of liabilities, which obviously this is because you've got a liability here, what you may follow or what you may commit to memory is the rule that if carrying amount is higher than tax base for liabilities, this temporary difference will be regarded as a deductible difference and deductible differences lead to the creation of or to recognition of a deferred tax um, asset. 
So this asset is going to equal 260,000, the size of the temporary difference, times the tax rate, which um, is in force, which in this question we were given as 25%. So let's take 25% of 260,000. Um, half would be 65, uh, sorry, half would be 130,000, one quarter, therefore must be um, 65,000. Okay, good. And that's going to be def our deferred tax asset. I guess the easier way to think about it is, if you've already paid tax on this amount in respect of the year 2022, then in 2023, you won't have to pay any tax on, in relation to this income. So even though you recognize it in your income statement, there will be no tax payable as such because you've already paid it. And that's definitely in line with a deferred tax asset. So. Let's make this picture more complete. If we want to record what happens, then over here in the PL, I'm going to say tax expense. And recall from pre previous videos that this can be decomposed into current tax and um, deferred tax. And what the company will do is it will have to in terms of its current tax, it will have to tax the revenue received on a cash basis. So in the 2022 column, it will say, well, I'm paying tax on it. So there is a tax expense, a current tax expense equal to 65,000, even though it has not recognized any of the revenue. And the whole idea behind creating a deferred tax asset is to say, hang on, Let's create an item here, deferred tax asset, which will act as a relief down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this gets neutralized. So in brackets, something negative, but something negative within the expense line, which basically causes the tax expense to become zero, right? Because we've got a we've got a we've got an expense and then the opposite of an expense. And therefore, the tax expense on a net basis becomes zero. But the whole thing, the whole idea behind creating this item, which um, which creates the opposite of an expense, is to say this corresponds to the creation of an asset up here. So an asset appears equal to 65,000. And the whole point of this asset is to provide relief at the PL level. But don't be fooled by this being in brackets. It's a negative item, but within an expense line. So the overall impact of this blue item on the PL is a positive one, which corresponds to the fact that we've got an asset over here. In the subsequent year, when the company doesn't actually pay any current tax anymore, because it's this, this revenue has already been taxed in the year 2022, so there is no current tax. And obviously, I'm assuming there are no other items of revenue here that come in on an ongoing basis. Well, this is the time to realize that this asset disappears from over here. Because, you know, next year, or at the end of the year 2023, you will not have any temporary difference anymore. And therefore, this was the asset on the 31st of December 2022. But one year later, 31st of December 2023, you're looking at a zero temporary difference. And whatever tax rate you apply to it, 25% or something different, you're still going to get zero. So an asset of zero, that's why this needs to disappear and uh, become zero within the assets. When assets disappear, like, you know, with write-downs, write-offs, or systematic depreciation or amortization, this creates an expense at the PNL level. So an expense, which is going to be sitting within deferred tax, okay, 65 of tax expense, okay. But in the right period, in the year 2023 column, which is when I actually, for financial reporting purposes, recognize the revenue from clients. And the whole purpose of this is to provide alignment 
even though I paid tax in this year on a cash basis, I recognized the tax expense or I deferred the recognition of that tax expense to the period in which the relevant revenue on which that tax was based was also recognized for financial reporting purposes. And you need the deferred tax asset to act as a temporary store of that uh, prepaid expense. So it's back to the question now, and um, I've wiped away the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the solutions, so to speak. However, you hopefully remember that we recognized for, as at the end of the year 2022, a deferred tax asset, which was 65,000 euro. But we also had, sitting within current liabilities, deferred income of 260,000. So the whole amount which was received from clients. So let's now identify which answer would be correct. Now, um, answer A, a deferred tax asset of 65,000 and deferred income within current liabilities of 260,000. Well, that's exactly what I said a moment ago. So this would indeed uh, be the correct answer to the question. The question is, um, or the solution is answer A. Let's just check the other ones because they're quite similar in terms of the numbers. Um, well, B is wrong because it talks about the deferred tax liability, which wouldn't happen. You're basically at the end of 2022 looking forward to the next year and you know next year you won't be paying tax um, because you've already paid it uh, in respect at least of that item of revenue. So not a liability. C is close. It says deferred tax liability of 60. F oh, OK, that's also wrong because it says deferred tax liability and it confuses deferred income uh, with uh, being an asset rather than a liability. So that's wrong as well uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, OK, so it's answer A.